Let's now do a full scale analysis of the following function. We'll first do our first derivative analysis, determine where f is increasing, where it's decreasing. We'll find out what the max is, what the min is, where all the relative extrema are. Then we'll go on to a second derivative analysis and we'll figure out where we have points of inflection and where our function is concave up and concave down. Then we'll take a look at our function and see how all of this fits together. So let's start with our first derivative analysis. First, let's take the derivative of f. f prime of x is equal to 15 x to the fourth minus 60 x squared. Now let's find the critical points of f. The critical points are where f prime is equal to zero or undefined. Well, this is always going to exist because it's a polynomial, so let's set it equal to zero. We can first take out a 15x squared, and we're left with x squared minus four. And of course, this is equal to zero. We can further factor this as 15x squared times x minus two times x plus two. So we have possible, we have actually critical points at x equals negative two, x equals zero, and at x equals two. Let's now do our first derivative line analysis to determine where we might have maxes and mins, and also we'll determine where our function is increasing and decreasing. So here's negative two, here is zero, and here's positive two. Let's look to the left of negative two, and we'll use this part right here, because that might be easier to plug into. To the left of negative two, let's try negative three. Positive outside, negative in here, negative in here. This will be positive. How about between negative two and zero? How about negative one? Positive out here, negative inside here, and positive right here, so that'll be negative. To the right of zero and two, let's try positive one. Positive, negative, positive. So this is also gonna be negative from zero to two. Now let's check from two to infinity. How about three? Positive, positive, positive. There we are. Now you'll notice that although zero is a critical point, it is not a max or a min because f prime is not changing. It's going from negative and still remaining negative afterwards. Keep in mind that at x equals zero, f prime is equal to zero. So f is not decreasing at zero. That must be noted. Okay, so we have a relative max at x equals negative two because f prime is changing from positive to negative. And we have a relative min at x equals two because our derivative f prime is changing from negative to positive. Also, we know that f is increasing from negative infinity to negative two and from two to infinity. And f is decreasing from negative two to zero and from zero to positive two. So let's actually write all of this out. f is increasing on the interval from negative infinity to negative two and from two to infinity. f is decreasing on the interval from negative two to zero union from zero to two. Keep in mind that it is not decreasing at zero, so that's not actually part of our analysis. Now we f, f has a relative max at x equals negative two, and if you plug negative two into your function, let's plug negative two in, you get positive 64. So the maximum value, or the relative max, is 64. Furthermore, we have a relative min at x equals positive two, 
And if we plug 2 into our function, we get negative 64. So the relative min value of our function is negative 64. Of course, it's plugging in to here. And this is our first derivative analysis. We know where f is increasing, where it's decreasing, and we also have our relative extrema. It's now time to do our second derivative analysis to determine the concavity and inflection points of this function. So we'll take our first derivative, let's copy this, let's paste it down below, All right, now let's take the second derivative at this point. The second derivative is 60x cubed minus 120x. We can factor out a 60x, so this is equal to 60x times x squared minus two, and we'll set this equal to zero. This is always defined. We'll set it equal to zero to see where we have possible inflection points. And of course we have possible inflection points at x equals negative root two, x equals zero, and x equals positive root two. To determine whether these are actually inflection points, we need to do our second derivative line analysis. So let's make this negative root two, we'll make this zero, make this positive root two. Let's look to the left of negative root two. Like for example, let's check negative 10. Negative out here, very positive in here, that's gonna be negative to the left of negative root two. How about between negative root two and zero? Let's check negative point one. If we check negative point one, that's negative out here and negative over here, that's gonna be positive. To the right of zero, how about point one? positive out here, but still negative in here. So that'd be negative out uh, right here. And to the right of root two, how about five, positive and positive. So that means that we have inflection points at x equals negative root two, x equals zero, and x equals positive root two. Furthermore, we know that f is concave up when the second derivative is positive, and that occurs between negative root two and zero and to the right of root two. So this is concave up on the interval from negative root two to zero, union root two to infinity. And f is concave down on the interval from negative infinity to negative root two, since that's where f double prime is negative, and of course from zero to positive root two. So this is our full scale analysis of this function. If you wanted to, you could graph the function as it is right now. Fortunately, I have researched this graph on wolframalpha.com. And here it is. Our function, let's, let's do a double screen. Our function is increasing on the interval from negative infinity to negative two. So here's negative infinity up to negative two, that is correct. And then we have a relative max at negative two. And so here is our relative max at negative two. Then our function decreases from negative two to zero. So here we have a decrease from negative two to zero. And the derivative is zero at x equals zero. But then of course it decreases again down to negative two where we have a relative min and that is correct. And finally, our function's increasing to the right of two. Now, of course, it looks like our max is, in fact, 64, and our min 
is in fact negative 64. So everything that we've done here is absolutely correct in our first derivative analysis. Now let's take a look at our second derivative analysis. So we know that f is concave down from negative infinity to negative root 2. So negative infinity to negative root 2, let's see where that would be, that's approximately right here. And in fact, our function is concave down in that region. And then from negative root 2 to 0, it's concave up. So that is absolutely correct. Here we have a concave up function. And then from 0 to negative root 2, or to positive root 2, our function is concave down again. And finally, to the right of root 2, our function is concave up. And that is what our concavity tells us about our function. Of course, at negative root 2, 0, and positive root 2, we have inflection points because our function is changing concavity at each of those points.